Hello, my name is Keshwani. This K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the JRE. We have been solving JRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the JRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 246. And today is our lesson number 161. Please turn to page 246, problem number 21, the last part, the part E. Here is the function that is given to us. We are told that fx equals x plus the absolute value of x. Let's see what we can do with it. The easiest and the simplest way to understand this function, what is going on in here, is to just plug in different values of x and just see what happens. So that's what we're going to do here. Here's our x and here is our y, which is x plus the absolute value of x. For example, when x is 1, for example, when x is 1, y is going to be 1 plus the absolute value of 1. 1 plus the absolute value of 1. Absolute value of 1 is 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2. It's just 2. Or, if you like, 2 times 1. When x is 2, we get 2 plus the absolute value of 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, which is simply 2 times 2. When x is 3, we get 3 plus the absolute value of 3, which is simply 2 times 3. When x is 5, we get 5 plus absolute value of 5, which is simply 2 times 5. And when x is 3 quarter, it's going to be 3 quarter plus the, plus, plus the absolute value of 3 quarter, which is simply 2 times 3 quarter. And when x is 17, 19, it's going to be 19 plus the absolute value of 19, which is simply 2 times 19. You get the idea. Do you see the pattern here? What is the pattern here? The pattern is that, the pattern is that when x is positive, when x is positive, well, as long as x is positive, y equals 2 times x. That's what here. Well, that's what we observe here. You see, no matter no matter what value x assumes, y is always two times the amount. Is two times the amount. That's what we observe here. Now let's see what happens when x is not positive. Let's well, let's see what happens when x is negative. But before we do that, let's do one last one here. One last one here, just to keep it, just to keep things interesting. What happens if x is zero? If x is 0, we get 0 plus the absolute value of 0, which of course is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, which is same as 2 times 0. So we should actually say when x is positive or 0. y equals 2 times x because of course 2 times 0 is 0. So 0 also qualifies. Let's see what happens when x is negative. When x is negative, we get negative 1 plus the absolute value of negative 1. But absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. So we get negative 1 plus a positive 1. This negative 1 and positive 1, they cancel each other out. And we get a big fat 0. What happens if x is negative 2? When x is negative 2, we get negative 2 plus the absolute value of negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. So again, we get a negative 2 here and a positive 2 there. They cancel each other out and we get a 0. If x is negative 5, we're going to get a negative 5 plus the absolute value of negative 5, and they're going to cancel each other out. Because, because the absolute value of any negative number, because the absolute value of any negative number becomes a positive number, and therefore this initial, ne this initial negative value, if x is negative, this initial negative value is going to cancel out this guy. This, was, this is what's going on. If x is negative, then x plus the absolute value of x equals, so this is a negative number, this is a negative number, and this is a positive number. And they are, they are the same value because they are both x's, so they cancel each other out. And we get a big fat zero. Let's write that down too. So another thing we observe is that when x is negative, the value of the function, the value of the 
function which is same as saying which is same as saying the value of y equals a big fat zero. When x is negative, y equals zero. When x is not negative, when x is not negative, y equals y equals two times x. When x is negative, y equals a big fat zero. That's what we observe here. Now the question is, how do mathematicians write it? Of course, if you were to open a math book, any kind of math book, and with a function like this, they're not going to spell it out like that. We have to learn how to write it in a in a mathematical way. So this is this is how we do it. I need the room. So what we observe here is that what we observed just now is that f of x f of x equals two times x when x is greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to zero is the same as saying when it's positive or zero. And we found that f of x equals zero when x is negative. And this is how we write it. This is how it is written. f of x, f of x f of x equals 2x instead of saying when x is, we put a comma here, instead of putting when we put a comma and we write it like this, which, which is read as f of x equals 2x when x is greater than or equal to 0 and f of x equals 0 when x is negative and we, that's just how, this is how it's written. Let's read it together, shall we? So this is now written in the language of mathematics, we're going to read it in English language. What it says is that f of x, which is same as saying the value of y, which is same as saying the value of y, value of y or value of the function equals 2 times the value of x as long as x is positive or 0. In other words, as long as x is not negative. If x is negative, then the value of the function equals 0. That's all. That's all there is. Now, the next thing we have to do is figure out what the shape is going to be like. But before we talk about the shape, let's ask ourselves, what are the limitations on the value of x? Is? What are the limitations on x? Are there any limitations as to what values x can take? Let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's answer that question. I'm going to do it here. I have to raise all of this thing. Let's ask ourselves. Let's observe it here. X. Here it says x, x as long as x is positive or equal to zero, and here it says x is negative. In other words, it's okay for x to be negative, it's okay for x to be positive number, it's okay for x to be zero. It's just that the value of the y is a different depending on what where the x falls. But as far as x itself is concerned, it has no limitation. There is no limitation. There is no limitation. on what values on what values x can take x can take any value it wants x can take x can assume any value it wants x can assume any value it wants now we're going to translate this thing in the language of mathematics in the language of mathematics, we say the domain domain of this function is set of all real numbers. Domain of this function is set of all real numbers. That's how we, that's how we write it. Let's plot it, shall we? Let's plot this function. I need room really badly. Anyway, I'm going to have to erase this thing because I need the room. 
let's plot it, see what the shape looks like. So as far as the domain is concerned, there are no restriction because it can be positive, it can be negative, it can be zero, it can be fraction, it doesn't matter what it is. Let's see what it looks like. We just found out that if x is <coughs> if x is negative y is zero, when x is negative one, y is zero, when x is negative two, y is zero, when x is negative three, y is zero, when x is negative four, y is zero. So this is the portion, this is the part that concerns us. When when x is when x is negative, the graph just sits right on the x-axis because y is zero. What happens when x is positive? When x is positive, when x is positive 1, when x is positive 1, y is 2. When x is positive 2, y is 4. When x is positive 3, y is 6. Remember, but remember that's what he says here. It says if x is positive, if x, if x is positive, as, as long as x is greater than or equal to zero, the value of y is two times the x. Value of y is two times the x. So when x is technically here also is two times the x. When x is zero, y is two times zero, but two times zero happens to be zero. But technically that thing also qualifies. That's why it's equal to sign here. And when x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 4, and so forth. This is the shape of the graph. Shape of the graph is this line right here. And this line, this line, has a slope of 2, has a slope of 2, a slope of 2 means, slope of 2 means, means, every time x goes up by 1 unit, every time x goes up by 1 unit, y goes up by two units and of course the reverse is also true every time x goes up by one unit y goes up every time slope of two means every time x goes up by one unit y goes up by two units as you can see here when x is zero y is zero when x goes from zero to one when x goes up by one unit y goes up by two units from from zero to two when x goes from one to two that's an increase of one and therefore the y goes from 2 to 4 and so on and so forth. That's what slope of 2 means. But that's what the graph looks like. That's, that is the shape of the graph. The very last thing that we have to do is to ask ourselves what are the intercepts of this graph. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the intercepts of this graph. Let's start with y-intercept. y-intercept is where x equals 0. In other words, the place where the graph cuts the x-axis. Well, the graph cuts the x-axis right here. Y-intercept is when x equals to 0. When x is equal to 0, y is 0, right there. The y-intercept here is where x equals to 0, which is the origin. What about x-intercept? What about x-intercept? This graph has infinite numbers of x-intercept. X-intercept is where the graph cuts the x-axis. Well, it cuts the x-axis every single point, right here. This entire part, this entire bottom part that you see there sitting on the x-axis, that's this x-intercept. It has infinite number of x-intercepts. As far as the y-intercept is concerned, it cuts the y-axis at zero. Therefore, the y-intercept is zero. That's all. Did we answer everything that they're looking for?
So what is the domain of this function? One more time, the domain of this function is domain of this function is domain of this function is set of all real numbers. Set of all real numbers. In other words, there are no limitation as to what values x can assume and what value x cannot assume. X, x can take any value it wants. That's all. It's just that when x is negative, y happens to be zero because the first part, we only did that, the first part shows up as x, which is a negative number, and then the second part shows up as absolute value of x, which is a positive number, and they are the same value, they cancel each other out, so when x is negative, y is zero. When x becomes positive, y, ha y becomes two times the amount of x. That's all, as we can see right here. That's all there is. That's it, we're done with this thing. And finally, we finished this darn thing. It was taking forever. We're starting tomorrow. We're starting tomorrow. We'll start solving geometry problems that you see on page number 259. If you turn to page 259, they give you some geometry exercises, and those are the problems we're going to start doing from tomorrow. And there are 14 of them, and they should go very fast. They are very straightforward and simple questions. All right? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.